All right, welcome to Ask Dr. Jason. I'm Dr. Jason Warrell coming to you from sunny, beautiful LA. And it's been a minute, we're about two weeks behind. We've had so many questions come in. We've been busy, we've been traveling, we've been aligning spines and minds. Lots happening, taking care of our people in our office. So my apologies for not seeing you live. If you have a question, drop me your question here. What's up, Dexstar? Uh, we got a list of questions. Let's roll, Bridge, what do we got today? All right, first question comes from Pranav, says, Pranav, all right, let's go. This helps, my symptoms are tingling from bottom to toes, mm -hmm. aching in all muscles and joints, in leg and hip, mm -hmm. sometimes burning feeling, skin feels very sensitive, muscles constantly feel contracted, sharp pain in my buttocks along my sciatic nerve, mm -hmm. sharp pain right in the middle of the S1, S2 area on the sacrum, I think. These symptoms don't feel they're getting better or worse, just the same. Okay, so Pranav is complaining of symptoms in the S1, S2 area along his sacrum. He's complaining of changes in sensation in the skin and pain. This signifies nerve impingement. Nerve impingement is when the nerve is pressed on, uh, compressed, coming out of the spine, coming out of the sacrum. This is definitely a sign of subluxation or spinal misalignment. So sorry for you, Pranav. Get to a Cairo. Ouch, anytime you've got nerve compression, it hurts. Great question, thank you. Next one, please. All right, hey, Dr. Jason, my Cairo only does the black machine you use and no adjustments. Mm -hmm. Should I look into seeing another doctor? That's a great question. Do we have a name? Parish World. Parish World, all right, so Parish World says, hey, my Cairo uses the Arthro Stim, that machine that goes da 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 like that, and he said, um, he doesn't do adjustments. Well, actually, that is a machine used to do an adjustment, however, it can be more or less specific. Sometimes we use it in a way to loosen up scar tissue, to put general motion into the spine. However, for specific adjustments, it can work and it can be helpful and it is a viable technique. So the goal of an alignment or an adjustment is to stimulate the nerve endings and receptors inside and around the joint and the vertebrae. That's gonna relay messages to the brain, which is essentially stimulating the brain. The brain makes changes back down. So it's definitely a viable treatment tool. You should see how you're both feeling and functioning. We don't gauge care just off how you're feeling. No need to switch chiros if you're getting good care. Great question, thank you. Next question. All right, next question from Mike Kambala. Mm -hmm. Says, hi Dr. Worrell, I had a question about chiropractic. Mm -hmm. Are there different types of chiropractors? I'm a freshman in high school, really want to be a chiropractor when I grow up. Mm -hmm. If you can be, if you can please answer that question, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. And Thank also, one more question. Mm -hmm. How much college or school is required to be a chiropractor? Excellent, and what was the name again? Mike. Mike, so Mike, thank you for reaching out. Humbled and honored that you want to join our profession. It's a beautiful profession. Number one, we need more great chiros, so that's that's huge. Number two, are there different kinds of chiropractors? There most certainly are, but in essence, it's their technique that differs. So some chiropractors practice more of an osseous technique. They adjust manually with their hands. Others use instrument adjusting. Um, others use more energetic type techniques where they're not correcting subluxation, but they're working more with um, uh, the subtle energy of the body. Um, as a chiropractor myself, um, what I do is I work with an osseous technique. So really there's no right or wrong. There's different techniques for different bodies and different issues. And then as far as schooling goes, every university is different. You've got to check with the university or college you want to go to for chiropractic care. The one I went to was a unit requirement. Some have maybe a bachelor's degree requirement to get in. Usually it's either a comparable number of units to a bachelor's degree or, um, or an actual degree itself, like a pre-med degree. So just check with the university you want to go to. Great questions. Thank you for reaching out and good luck to you in your career. Next one, please. All right, Dylan says, what could be causing pain in my right shoulder? And also note, or also asks, is it okay to sleep with my neck elevated or should I sleep flat? Okay, so Dylan wants to know what could be causing pain in my right shoulder, and the honest, straightforward answer is so many things. It could be shoulder pain, it could be coming from the upper back, it could be coming from the rib cage, it could be coming from the nerves that come out of the neck that go to the shoulder. Um, there's a lot of different issues there. And then the next question about sleep was what? Is it okay to sleep with my neck elevated or should I sleep flat? You, you really want to avoid sleeping with your neck pushed forward like that. We did a video on that, how to sleep properly. I would definitely check it out. It's on youtube.com slash Dr. Jason. Um, you really want the neck to be supported and the head to be rested back. And that can also aggravate shoulder problems. Anytime you have a shoulder problem, you have a neck problem, neck problem, shoulder problem, they really go together. If somebody has a neck issue, they usually have limited range of motion in their shoulder. So definitely see a Cairo. Great question, thank you. Next. All right, next, will you tell me some stretches that I can do 
because today I was at the gym, I was doing front and back squats, and mm. my hammy started to hurt really bad. Oh, snap. I think I tore it, so if you see this, can you give me a couple tips? Thank you. Great question. Sorry you hurt yourself, bud. That's really rough. We actually just released a video today. Uh, I think it's three stretches for your hamstrings, right? Yeah, three stretches for your hamstrings. It's on our Active Health Tips playlist, so we just re released that today. Perfect timing. Thank you for reaching out. Check the video for sure. Next. Next is from James. Mm -hmm. It says, Dr. Jason, I was looking to get your opinion. I'm considering going into chiropractic. However, here in New York, they catch a lot of heat for being a joke. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that at all. But what do you believe the future of it will be? I thoroughly enjoy the practice and how it works. Excellent. So, um, again, we need more great chiros. Good looking out. I'm glad for to have you join our profession. I would tell you that uh, one of my mentors, Dr. John D. Martini, says when the voice and vision on the inside is louder than the voices on the outside, meaning other people, you begin to master your life. So if you say they catch a lot of heat, I mean, I think you're really focused too much on what other people think. Um, I've got, you know, thousands plus thousands and thousands of fans and people that adore and love what I do all over the world. I probably have an equal number of people that don't adore what I do and don't like me very much. My goal is to serve, give love, serve my community, to help people that need help, to align people that want to come in and have true health from the spine. So um, you can't worry about the people that you know don't approve of you. I don't need an approval from anybody. I just need to uh, follow the law. I need to practice correctly, uh, practice from the heart, focus, take good care of people, um, love and support my people, love and support my team, love and support my family. Um, that's really all there is to it. So I think you're thinking too much about that other stuff and you should focus on what you want to do. Great question. Next. All right, next. Hey, Dr. Jason, I wanted your opinion about something. I have arthritis in my back and suffer from back pain constantly. Would you recommend a chiropractic appointment? Mm -hmm. My neck is stiff as well, been like that for a couple months now. Mm -hmm. And my work, I lift heavy things. Yes, I would. Great question. Next one. <laughs> All right, next one. Hi there, Dr. Jason. Mm -hmm. I've been watching your YouTube channel. Thank you. I'm so convinced that perhaps you can help my mother. She mm -hmm. has slipped disc, which pinches her sciatic nerve. However, she's been getting steroid shots, but it doesn't work quite well. She's still getting cramps and lower back pain. I'm wondering if there's any way you can help her. We're from Texas, but I'm willing to fly to California to get the proper help. Thank you. Uh, first of all, um, just saw a patient with this yesterday. Many times people have um, disc degeneration, their spine is subluxated, it's out of alignment, it's stuck, it doesn't move, the nerves are being pushed upon, um, they're having pain and problems in the sciatic region or other areas. They go and they get shots because it lowers the inflammation. Our goal is to not um, to avoid medicine, but to help you to utilize natural healing and to utilize your body's own innate healing power and to utilize, of course, the choices you make and to use medicine as a bridge as you need, as you need it, but only when absolutely necessary. Um, but just had a person that had this yesterday and it didn't help, or I should say it helped temporarily and then the pain came back. So um, those are the types of cases that we love. We love to try to help people to heal naturally. We love to try to help people to get out of pain. Um, there are a lot of great chiros in Texas. Of course, I'm humbled and honored to see you. Um, we're here if you need us and uh, you know, honored. Thank you for reaching out. Next question. All right. Hi, Dr. Jason. I'm Natalie from Malaysia. I am also currently a chiropractic student and awesome. does ballet as a hobby as well. Mm -hmm. I recently watched a YouTube video about you adjusting a ballet dancer mm -hmm. and have several questions. Do you adjust ballet dancers or gymnasts or any athlete who are extremely flexible differently? Mm -hmm. If so, how do you work together with their flexibility without hurting them? Awesome. That's a really good question. I have one dancer that comes to mind in particular, but we have multiple and we've had multiple over the years. Um, what you've got is people that have relatively more relaxed ligaments than let's say other people and they do have a higher degree of flexibility, sometimes globally and sometimes segmentally as well. If there is a subluxated area that's out of alignment and that needs an adjustment, it really, really does come down to knowing technique very well and I'm very blessed to have studied many and trained many, many, many hours and I train other doctors on that. So um, the adjustment essentially doesn't change, but what we've got to do is what's called taking them to tension. So whether it's a lower back alignment or a neck adjustment, you cannot adjust the vertebrae properly until you first gently gap the joint. It's got to be at this level of what we call tension and then you apply the thrust. So it really comes down to a technique or um, um, the, the way that you do things. So it's a great question and it takes training and practice. Thank you. Next question. Next question. Hello from Montreal, Quebec. All right. Was wondering if you had any tips to help me control my anxiety besides mm. watching your YouTube videos. 
They do help take my mind off things, but then I get jealous of the people that are getting adjusted. Keep it up, Dr. J. We need your motivation. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. That's amazing. I'm sorry you're having anxiety. Look, I'm not a psychologist. I cannot advise on psychological conditions. What I can tell you from my own experience, anytime that I've experienced anxiety, it's because I'm getting too much into the future and the unknown and thinking so much, you know, getting away from the present. So one of the couple of tricks I use to ground myself, um, number one is the pace of movement and that can go for your speaking as well. So if I'm talking really fast, I'm gonna get kind of more excited and that might feed into thinking ahead and thinking about other things that haven't happened yet. So your pace of movement, if I'm rushing around my office because my office is full, I might get a little anxious, oh my God, there's people waiting, versus calmly going from patient to patient. Another tip is breathing. If I breathe quickly and I'm like I'm working out, that can really make me potentially feel more anxious. So really slowing down the breathing, slowing down the pace of speaking, slowing down my bodily movements if I'm walking or moving. And then the next thing would be exercise, but of course um, to burn off stress and to get my heart rate up to a higher level so your body feels more capable of dealing with stress. Um, and then third would be getting aligned. When I get aligned, it brings me back to that present time consciousness. It really truly is amazing. Uh, it's one of the things I love about chiropractic. It really puts you back into your body. Great questions, thank you. Next question. The next question says, Hi, Dr. J. I have a herniated disc in my lower back. Mm -hmm. I'm experiencing pain in my right buttocks. Should I be concerned? I don't feel it in my leg, though. It's pretty painful. Mm -hmm. Wondering if I should contact my chiro or not. Yes, you should. And I'm sorry that you're in pain, but absolutely you should. Most people wait until it's too late, so definitely contact your chiro. Um, let's try to, we got to wrap it up here. I'm running out of time, guys, so let's go. All right, dear Dr. Jason, I'm writing this in concern of a family member. Having back aches multiple times near the lower back L5. Mm. There's a bulging disc. Um, get them to a chiro, okay? Okay. Hey, Dr. Jason, anything you recommend with healing sacrum and lower back pain? Yeah, so we've got people that come in uh, regularly with sacrum and lower back pain, and it's a combination of things. Number one is getting aligned. You gotta get the spine into alignment. Now let's say your spine's already aligned, you gotta keep that core strong. And in addition to keeping your core strong, you've gotta make sure you're living a relatively anti-inflammatory state. If you're always eating and drinking inflammatory things, that's gonna provoke any problem you have. So alignment, core strength, and inflammation reduce. Great question, next one. Hi, Dr. Jason. First, I love your YouTube channel, but most importantly, love your attitude and outlook regarding healing. Thank you. It is uplifting and so encouraging. My question for the Ask Dr. Jason segment is, can you give some general tips on how to maintain gut health? Ooh. How would one know that their gut is unhealthy? Thank wow. you so much. Great question. Um, let's see if we can wrap it up with that. Um, number one is cut the sugar. Most people eat too much sugar. Sugar is basically poison for our body. We need it to an extent, but it can really harm and throw off your gut flora. Number two, most people eat only processed foods when in fact we're born to eat whole foods, to eat raw foods, to eat cooked foods, but whole food. Um, the more processed food you eat, a lot of times things like wheat, dairy, soy, corn, they clog up your intestines, uh, grains. You know, grains um, naturally made are okay. We're not really designed to eat a lot of grains, but we can eat them as we can eat you know, cake all day if we want to. But things like grains really clog up your intestines, they damage your gut flora. Um, antibiotics sometimes may be necessary, but taking a probiotic when you take an antibiotic. So in, in essence, less processed food, less sugar, always take a probiotic if you take an antibiotic, and um, lots and lots of greens, fiber, and whole foods. Um, that's probably the simplest way to take care of your gut health. Make sure your alignment is there, the nerves that come out of the lower back go to the intestines, that's important. Um, other than that, there's a lot more tips, but that would be simple. So there you go. And was there one more we can do really quick? One more. Okay. Kind of related, it says, hello, I've been dealing with IBS, which Oof. causes leaky gas and constipation. Yeah. For the past few weeks, I'm only 17. Ouch. Would going to a chiropractor resolve my issues? Wow. My lower back is weak and my posture is pretty bad. So listen to this question. The answer is that number one, I can't promise that it would resolve your condition because we don't as chiropractors treat intestinal issues. We do not. However, listen to the question. I've got intestinal issues. My lower back is also weak. There's usually a connection between these two. The nerves that come out of the lower back go to the intestines. Typically, if somebody is subluxated out of alignment, having a lower back problem, it's very extremely common that they've got some sort of intestinal issue because they're having poor nerve function in that area and there may be another variety of issues as well contributing. 
Going to a chiropractor and getting your spine in alignment will optimize your nerve flow and it'll typically help you to make better lifestyle decisions which may also contribute to healthier intestinal issues. So um, I think it's an all round win if you go get checked out by a chiro, there are other things you can do. I'm Dr. Jason, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much, we really try to get to all your questions. Sometimes there's a lot of them. Uh, we're ready for our next episode, so send your questions, DM me on Instagram, hashtag on Twitter at Dr. Warrell, ask Dr. Jason, email me, YouTube, just send them over and we'll get them, all right? See you next time.